Welcome to episode number 48 of Profit or Loss, the series where I take faulty electronic items from eBay, attempt to fix them and sell them for money. This week we're coming off the back of a two win streak and they say things come in three. Speaking of three, I have a rhyme for the what's the item today, a PSP. That sounded a lot better in my head. I've not worked on one of these before, so I have no idea what I'm doing, which sometimes does actually make for better content. And people have been telling me to look at a PSP for a very long time. I think it even has a, it does have, a, it has a screen protector on look at that lovely jubbly condition wise fantastic i can't really uh grumble again the screen protectors on it the back we don't have any scratching mm, there's okay a little bit of scratching i did have one of these when i was younger being honest i can't really remember it supposedly the battery has already been changed in this device so just for confirmation does it power on no it doesn't all right i'm glad we got that out the way what happens if i hold it up does anything happen any light or anything like that no nothing what about the umd slot oh look at that so where do we start? Well, I bought a battery just in case because I like to perform all testing myself. This battery, the one that I've just taken out of the PSP is a 3.6 volt battery. Out of interest, let's uh, let's test it and see what we get. I have to push the probes quite far in, 0 0.438. So battery is not good. Let's give Betty the battery a go. What do we measure on this battery? 3.9 volts, sweet. So that's gonna be enough to turn the console on supposedly. If I plug this in and it works, moment of truth, does it power on? No, it doesn't, okay. And it's definitely all in there properly. All right, so, oh, oh, that's if you push it down, you get like a little hold button. But no, nothing happens when you go to turn it on. It does look like we have a little warranty sticker here, doesn't it? Guarantee void if seal is damaged. So maybe this has had prior repair attempt on it before. Can't confirm because I don't know if those stickers come in all of the PSPs, I have no idea, but it does look like an aftermarket sticker. Could be wrong. Just under the microscope quickly, we have this here. There's a few marks. I don't know why they're there. Is that adhesive from where there was like a sticker or something here before? Not too sure. It's not uh, wiping off easy, but just something to uh, to bear in mind, I guess. I'm gonna try and take this apart. I've never actually opened one of these, so it is going to be, I would say probably comedic, but I'm also not gonna put you through that struggle. So I'll be back in a second. So far, it's not actually been a bad experience. I've taken the screen off. I've just, you just have to be super careful when you were prying it because there was adhesive. Everything seems to be intact. That's where our power supply goes in and charges the battery up here over this side. But then over this side, I couldn't help but notice something. Look at that. Do we have some sort of corrosion there? Something is going on. So let's head on over to the scope quickly. What do we have there? Two resistors and a cap. Is that a cap? Or is it an LED? It looks like a, oh, I don't know. I still can't really tell. I'm gonna have to um, get the board out. I think looking at where the plate goes, I think that's an LED because we have these two lights here and we can see there's further damage down here to these caps. Look at that. Yeah, we have an LED there, LED there. That thing below it, which I'm gonna try and point to without breaking it. This is probably a cap that looks like it may have seen better days. Interesting so far, and I'm kind of glad that we can see something wrong with the board. Ironically, we've just landed on the first thing I was gonna check, which is a fuse. F7001, so we have the fuse there. We don't seem to have any corrosion or anything like that around the fuse. What about under here? Still a bit of protection for, I'm assuming for a chip, maybe that gets really hot. I know where we had an issue, which is over here. What I'm gonna do really, really quickly is just check around the board to see if there, see if that liquid damage specifically has spread anywhere else, caused anything else to corrode. This has to be a fuse as well, this TD. And it even says on the board, wow, look at that, F6001, 2.5 amps. Let's double check this fuse whilst we're here. No. Am, am I sure? Oh, okay. Might me just being a little bit slow? Yep, okay, so that fuse has continuity. Now, do we have a short? No, we don't, okay. And to be honest with you, everywhere else looks pretty clean, again, a thermal pad on top of a chip. I'm gonna assume maybe the charging chip. Uh, it says CN, does that stand for charging something? Oh, I don't wanna break this too much. I'm just gonna leave that there because I, at the moment, I don't think our issue is gonna be around here. It may be, but we'll just leave it for the time being. But everywhere else looks relatively clean other than what we have over here. There's also an IC above that. Turning the board around. Whoa. Okay. So we have maybe what looks like a bad resistor there and a cap. And we have this. Is that an internal clock battery, I'm assuming? Which, uh which doesn't look too healthy, does it? Does that have any voltage in it? It does surprisingly, one volt. I think these are meant to be 3.3 .3 volts, but I could be entirely wrong. But this is like a, it looks like just a loose rust, to be honest with you. I mean, it seems to be scraping off, so it can't be too bad. Let's give this a little bit of a clean with some IPA. Now that I think I've got majority of that stuff off. There we go, it's basically brand new. Look at that. I think it was just, yeah, it was a low level sort of rust. This resistor here doesn't look too healthy though. Nonetheless, we shall measure 140K. 
145k to be up it's jumping all over the place we're looking at around we're looking anywhere between 110 to 170k so i think that's going to need replacing this cap here what do i have a good diode reading 0 0.6 in diode mode here now we have the issue of uh this little led here if we put it in diode mode with the correct polarity i'm sure that it will light up but it doesn't look like this is wanting to light up what about this one there we go all right we get something. So we get 1.8 volts. So this LED is actually okay. And surprisingly, it might be this one that isn't. So potentially this LED has gone bust as well. Let's test this fuse because I didn't do that before. Meter in continuity mode. There we go. Okay. That fuse there as well also seems to be a-okay. Good thing about this is that we can see where the issues are. So I'm just going to clean around those components that look a little bit corroded and go from there. I can't find any shorts on the board. I'm just going to measure this resistor here. I might have done that already. So apologies if I have. So if this is 7001, where is 4501? Don't think it's that. That looks more so like a cap. Resistors and a cap here, maybe? The FD, potentially. That looks more like a resistor. I'm going to go with this. And FD, I'm going to confirm, stands for fuse detected. Do we have continuity? Yes, we do. Do we have a short on either side? Nope. This looks like a fuse as well. It's measuring like a fuse, but no short either side. That one doesn't actually say it's a fuse on the board. Is this one a fuse? Well, it says CN401. I don't know if this is a fuse or a resistor. So it has a continuous path. Is it grounded? We do have the multimeter is going absolutely crazy. Well, that's a short to ground. So what's on the back of that? This side. Can confirm we don't have any shorts in this area. I think the direct component is this little transistor here. But from what I know, the middle pin is ground and everything else seems to be fine. And again, I don't have any shorts in this area. Everything seems to be checking out good. It could be that we've just cleaned the corrosion up and that's uh, sorted our issue. Definitely a possibility. Measure these diodes quick. 0 0.1 in voltage drop that way. 0 0.1 in voltage drop that way. That's 1.8. And that's also 1.8. It's a tough one, but I've um, I've got good faith. I've cleared up all the corrosion that I can on the board. I've had a look around all the fuses. None of them seem to be blown or have a short. I've specifically spoken to Roy, a member of our Discord channel, and gone over a few measurements, and they all seem to be okay, other than the readings that we get on the LEDs. This is the power board here, and I've hooked it up to the actual main board itself. And I plugged it in a second ago, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to test it. And uh, I did exactly that. And it turns on. Would you look at that? I still think we have an issue with the LED on the other side. It's different to the power LED. And the internal clock battery seems to have quite low voltage. But I'm going to put the console back together and see if it works. And I'm not going to lie to you. I did turn it on already. And I can reveal that it does turn on. There we go. It asked me to set the battery uh, time. So it's 0, 0, 001. As you can see, one minute past midnight. So if I hold this down now and turn it off, is it going to remember the time? Ready? Turn it on. Is he going to remember it? We're about to find out. In three, two, one. Yeah, okay, sweet. All right, so the uh, the battery works as well, the internal clock battery. The speaker seems to be working. Uh, the buttons seem to be all good. The analog stick isn't working. I, I don't know if it's meant to on this menu. Maybe this only works in games from what I can remember. And again, these little LEDs down here don't seem to be working. I can't remember if they're meant to be on all the time or not, but I will connect it to the Wi-Fi and get all of that sorted as well. I did want to add into this to confirm. It's a bit of a fail because I put the uh, I put the reader in and uh, when I put it in, nothing happens, but it's been so long since I've used the PSP. I don't know if you have to restart the system. When I do restart the system, it just hangs on this green home screen and doesn't go anything past that. And if I open it, it loads up the game screen straight away. I don't know if that's because the UMD that I have is a little bit scratched. I have no idea. It looks in relatively good condition to me. Nonetheless, I will put that on the listing as well. Before we move on to our next item, I will just confirm I'm probably not going to end up selling this PSP as fully working. I need to replace a lot of those small components. And to do that, my best bet is probably going to be with a donor board. And a donor board is going to cost me around 25 to 30 pounds. And there's no point in me buying a working board and then breaking it to repair this one. It doesn't make sense financially. We'll add that up at the end of the video. Let's move on to our next item i respect the packaging of the second item i just really really hope that it wasn't broken in transit it's of course a nintendo switch i paid a total of 55 pounds for this unit usually i wouldn't spend anything over 50 pounds for a nintendo switch but in the description of this listing it states it doesn't turn on at all the customer has had it for years and it's always worked fine then said he put it into a dock next time he took it out and tried to turn it on it didn't work. So I have faith that this hasn't been opened before, which I'm obviously going to pay a little bit extra for. When I tell you that the condition of this thing is really, really good, I mean, it's really, really good. We have both of the screws at the bottom of the console, as well as the screw at the top. So I do genuinely believe that this person has not been inside 
this Nintendo Switch. Even look at the state of the rails. There's no scratches or anything. This is a really, really good condition console. Now, I'm going to go under the scope, but my logic is saying that if he's put it into a docking station and all of a sudden it's not working, I think the M92T36 or P13 USB chip has gone bust. Heading on over to the scope to just inspect the port quickly. How do we look? Immaculate. Look at that. It is fantastic. This customer states he's had it for years and he's kept this in such good condition. Fair play because some of the consoles we see here on eBay are rancid. You can see there, look, the screws are untouched. Because the port looks fine and this is already broken, I am going to plug in the ammeter to see exactly what's going on. What are we going to read here? Let's go. So we get something, 0 0.08, 0 0.12, Okay, so that shows, again, just a low battery, but we don't have anything on the display. So usually we'd have a battery symbol that would appear here. As always, I'll leave it to charge for five or 10 minutes just to see what's going on. Just as I expected, it has jumped up to 470 milliamps and it's probably been left alone long enough to actually fast charge, but it's not doing that. So I don't think the switch is initializing. It's charging the battery, but it's not turning on. Something is preventing that. Just as an FYI as well, this is a known good working battery. And again, we don't bump up to fast charging and the switch doesn't turn on. So I'm hopeful that the screen itself and the digitizer are actually okay. Again, just more appreciation for the fact that on the inside it is just as clean as a whistle. The water damage indicator is still intact, which is what we love to see. I'm actually very excited to get the board out and put it under the scope. Now, first thing we're gonna do is inspect. Remember we said either M92T36 or P13, but I will just quickly inspect this side of the board. I mean, it looks relatively clean. No big bangs or explosions, anything along those lines. Around BQ, all good. Flip the board over. Whoa, okay, lovely jubbly. Makes complete and utter sense, right? The seller stated that he put it in the docking station and then it didn't work. So my advice to the customer would be, get rid of that docking station. I wonder if it's blown any of the pads underneath because that can happen, but we're not gonna find that out until we actually remove the chip. We're not gonna place any flux on. We are simply just gonna remove the IC. This needs to be changed, but we will check for shorts as well because it's highly likely that we have a short on the board. Maybe not, it'll clean. How's that trace looking? Yeah, the trace isn't looking great, but I'm actually wondering if we could just solder it to the IC. Yeah, it's not looking healthy, is it? I'm gonna take the multimeter quick because some people might know. I've actually been caught out by this before where this actually exposed, exposed ground underneath. So I had one of these, I've done a trace repair and I still wasn't getting a display and it's because the explosion had gone so deep into the board, it had exposed a ground layer. So I had to go in, put solder mask on and do that. But this one doesn't look like it's exposed the ground layer. So I'm just gonna add a tiny wire here. and We should be okay, to be honest. So if I just put multimeter here and here, do we have a continuous path? We do. Is the filter okay? Yeah, the filter seems fine as well. Okay, I'll just check the rest of them quick. All seem to be measuring fine. So I'm assuming it is just that hole in the board. Before we go ahead and do the trace repair, do we have a short? No, we don't. What about around M92T36? No shorts at all around M92T36. So I think the IC is good as well. Let's get it fixed. Now I'm actually trying a flux called Steri HT hyphen TF, which I'm assuming stands for high temperature tacky flux. Let's give that a go and see how it deals with our high temperatures of 420 degrees on the soldering iron. Just want to see how this does. Really well. Really, really well. How does it clean? Bearing in mind I've not used IPA at the moment. That is done pretty good, I would say. Bear in mind I left the board for a little bit as well, so it was actually pretty cold. That's done a great job. We can see that actually this trace is pretty weak after a clean, so I am just gonna take this off. I'm gonna solder a trace from the filter here. I've put a little bit of a bend at the end of the wire just to give us that best connection. There we go. Now we're just gonna try and root it as best we can in line with the previous one. Just like that. And cut. Just dab to get rid of the flux without ruining that trace too much. IPA and a toothbrush. And there we have it. Lovely. Solder mask. And we should be able to put a P13 chip on. That's all solid now. I've also just flattened the wire because it was quite thick. So as you can see, it's more so likely the P13 USB will now sit flat to the pads. But in doing so, I broke my blade. Okay, here we go. The IC is tinned. Just placing it there for two seconds, coming in with the flux. Bit too much flux, but it should be okay. I'm not gonna push down. I'm just gonna give it a quick clean and see where we're at. 
this is why I wanted to inspect it. So I am going to need to push this down to the board because it's not making a connection. I am, however, happy with the positioning of the IC. So I'm just going to push down and apply heat. This side of the IC is fine. This side looks okay. Just concerned about this side and this side. I'm a lot happier with that now, so let's give it a test. Moment of truth, we have bare basics back together, so all we have, oh, I haven't put that battery in, is the battery, the backlight, and the LCD cable. First step is, do we get anything on the screen? Here we go. Anything? That's good. Anything on the screen? Yes! Come on. Okay. 480 milliamps. Does it turn on? It does, so we're rebooting. It should bump up to fast charging now. 820 milliamps perfect we don't have the digitizer connected so we're not going to be able to test that but that is wicked before i go ahead and reassemble it, i obviously need to test it on a docking station so i'm going to test that now quickly i have this little doohickey device which will help me do it without the dock for the time being so if we plug it in perfect does anything pop up here this takes a while anyway but my only concern is that the wire might be a bit too thick underneath the p13 usb i see nothing popping up sometimes we do have to turn it around so i've just done that now do we get anything on the screen it's charging, but it's not actually showing. Nothing at all. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to check the port. We are in diode mode. I have the meter on ground. The first four, we have two that are ground, B2, B3. I'm not going to show anything. VCC, we have 0 0.4. B5, 0 0.4. D plus, nothing. D minus, nothing. B8, 0 0.7. And VCC, again, 0 0.4. And then the last three on this side, we're not going to get anything. Interestingly enough, that's actually fine. If D plus and D minus aren't working, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't work on the docking station. I actually had one come into the shop a few months back where they said they couldn't get a keyboard or mouse working on their Nintendo Switch. Everything else works. The docking works, charging works, everything was fine. And it turns out that a filter had blown, causing D plus and D minus not to work. So I'll have a look at that as well, just in case somebody wants to plug a keyboard into this Nintendo Switch. But I do actually think that our trace was a bit too thick. Yeah, I think we're missing some connection there. It could also be that we just have a bad P13 USB. All right, here's how we're looking. This wire here is so much flatter than the other one. So we should be all right. I've tested continuity as well, and we get a solid path going from the top of the filter down to the end of the cable. I'm going to use the same P13 USB chip, and then if that doesn't work, it's got to be that that's faulty. Is it now flat to board? I would say that's a lot more flat than what it has been. Yeah, I can see all the solder connections underneath. Right, let's give it a test again. Okay, moment of truth. Does it dock over to the game scene? Plugging it in one way. Anything? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it took so long to register again. Sweet, so it docks, wicked. Right, now I'm gonna put it all back together and see if it fully works. And if so, Sally is gonna be happy. I almost forgot about D plus, D minus, which go here and here. So I'm gonna measure here, yep, open line, and here, yep, open line. This is the filter that I had to replace before. So open line there, open line there. I bet this filter is blown. What do we have here? 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Yep, so the filter here has gone. Coming with a little bit of flux just to help. Tiny bit of leaded. And there we go. 0 0.6, but that's because the board is hot. And here, 0 0.6. Would you look at that? Perfect. So that now has D plus and D minus. I'll say it once, I said it again. Here is this Nintendo Switch in all of its glory. The even better news is that it's an unpatched Switch. The serial starts with XAJ7002, which is going to increase the price by a fair bit. Everything works on connected to Wi-Fi, games work, and most importantly, it docks. So it's fully working Nintendo Switch. Let's head on over to Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet to see what the profits are today. Our total cost for today's video was £75. For parts, this was £11.95, £8.95 for the PSP battery, and about £3 for P13 USB. I think for the PSP, I'll be able to get £30 because it now actually turns on. So that does mean I've lost like a few pounds with that. But for the Nintendo Switch, I think I'm going to be able to get £140 because it's unpatched. So combining the two is £170. That gives us a gross profit of £67 pounds and 75 pence if we add that to our total we are still in the minus but it's only just minus 86 pounds and 57 p as always thank you so much for watching i'll leave last week's episode up here in the corner of your screen right now hit the thumbs up button subscribe if you're new around here follow me on twitch as well and i will see you in the next one have a great weekend peace